Thank you for joining this last session of EclipseCon uh, this week. It was really a great pleasure to see uh, all of you and discuss with many uh, of you uh, this week. So great moment. For me, it was my first EclipseCon. I, I really appreciate it. I know that many of you already have done so many. Uh, so today, my talk is about uh, the role of chat service uh, in building bridges across community projects and tools. I know it's a bit a long title. But first, before we uh, start, just a, a simple question. Who already used this service? At the OK. And who already has a next, um, Matrix account? OK, interesting. That's really interesting. So first, let me introduce myself. I'm Sebastian Artemat. I'm part of the release engineer team at the foundation. Uh, for maybe many of you who already managed to uh, create uh, an issue on uh, our internal GitLab for any project, maybe I already answered some of your requests with uh, my uh, GitLab account. I have also an, an account on uh, GitHub uh, for some projects. Uh, I have an X uh, account also. Uh, I don't use it so much, but. Uh, I'm uh, on this platform too, and the last one, uh, this is the one who uh, uh, the most interesting part of this talk, because it's new to the foundation since uh, now for uh, eight months, we have a matrix uh, address where we can start chatting. Yes, but before we start uh, uh, to discuss about uh, the chat service, uh, I will tell you a story about that guy. Is it really interesting, no? There's something particular. Can you notice what is particular on this picture? This end. It was generated by uh, an AI. So, okay, he has four fingers, but it looks like a bit uh, as me. No, I have five fingers. I can <laughs> show you. But uh, he, he has these fat fingers. And uh, I have often this fat finger syndrome. I don't know if you're aware about that. You type things on a keyboard and off. Oh. OK, I, enter, I press Enter uh, too fast, and shit, it was a, a push my code uh, accidentally. OK, that's fine. So I'm quite a lot upset about uh, what uh, I did. And I will, tell, uh, I will tell you about the story of this guy. Uh, Maybe it's a, a part of me about an experience I had a few months ago with an open source project. Uh, I tried to use an open source project and a specific picture, uh, feature of that open source project, but I was not able to use it properly, or I don't know, it, don't use, it was not usable at all. So uh, I will explain you my process on how to to uh, deal with uh, this problem and how to solve that problem uh, in a, with an open source project. First, an open source project is like a maze. You have a lot of documentation, resource, etc. So it can be quite uh, challenging to find uh, what you are looking for, especially if it doesn't work. So this classic approach is to look at uh, website documentation, forum, wikis, look at the project repository, issue, pull request, etc., and the source code. But source code can be quite challenging, as you can see, can be unreadable, understandable, and, um, and you need to uh, maybe sometimes uh, understand the full context of the project just to be sure that the, this feature is. Uh, it's uh, well uh, implemented and uh, very, uh, in the way you expected uh, uh, it also. You can ask also colleagues. That's, uh, I have great colleagues, so uh, I can ask, ask them to, uh, to, uh, to help me on some issue. And uh, maybe AI. I use AI for sure. So I find anything. So I decide to contribute to that project. Uh, I have two choices at that time to create a first issue on that project or uh, to uh, push um, a pull request or a merge request. It depends on. Uh, it was a GitHub at that time, so uh, it was a more pull request. But uh, uh, I was so sure that 
uh, this feature doesn't exist, uh, I create my new pull request to this, to this project. Simple. So I spend time to do that. And just as any open source project, uh, you have to take care about the context, the full context of that project. I mean, the code of conduct, licenses, security policy, that's really important. If you push uh, uh, some uh, code to the project, or propose some code to the project, and you introduce a dependency with, vulnerabil uh, with, uh, with vulnerability, that's a big issue, uh, definitely. So you have to take care about all of this. Uh, but that's normal. That's, it's an open source project. So that's definitely not a project. And I really decide to contribute to that project at that time. But it's time consuming. That's this approach. It's what I call, what's called is formal communication. Uh, I mean, by that, creating an issue, uh, pushing some uh, pull requests with a well-formed uh, well documentation. Uh, for instance, if you create an issue, you have a description, you have, you have to um, add some logs, you add, have to um, uh, maybe put some screenshots, etc. So that's a formal, uh, it's well-formed, you have to uh, uh, to, to do this in the proper way, to be able to be readable by uh, the community, by the, by the project, and to be tracked over the time uh, by the project also. If it's an issue or a feature request, it's really important. And I had that chance at that moment, someone answer me on that ticket and just tell me, OK, I was wrong. It's, it, uh, your parameter is wrong. Or maybe uh, you misread the documentation. It happens, definitely. Uh, so, but he, he just answered in two minutes. It was really incredible. So, what is the problem with uh, this uh, formal approach? Yeah. I make a big mistake because I, I misread the documentation. Maybe uh, I was not in the good mood uh, this, this day. I was maybe a little bit tired. Maybe I, do, I was doing too much uh, things in parallel. I don't know. But uh, I have this feeling that uh, I really waste my, uh, waste my time because uh, I had to uh, understand the full project, uh, understand the full code of conduct, uh, policy, etc., which, uh, which is a lot. Uh, and yeah, I had uh, this feeling uh, inside me. So, oh, sorry. So that's where informal way comes into play, contrary to informal way. I don't say that informal way is bad, but formal way in this particular case is really uh, uh, important. Informal way is like a discussion. If you uh, discuss with friends, colleagues, uh, with a coffee or beer, it's the same like that. It's uh, unstructured communication, very personal. You can say, uh, hello, hi, how are you uh, today? Naturally, that's, uh, that's uh, the base. And, uh, and a trust-based relationship between uh, uh, both parties. Oh, sorry. That's where, uh, if you work remotely, Okay, you don't have your colleague just nearby you. You don't work. If you don't work in open space with a big team, etc., and uh, like me, you are working in full remote, uh, that's where uh, uh, chat, chat tools are very important and have a real place uh, in the game. And in this particular use case, it, it will have really help me a lot. Uh, to uh, solve my, uh, um, my, my problem since the beginning. Because I spent some time to uh, develop a solution, to propose a pull request, and uh, to get an answer. If I had known about a channel where to ask a question, uh, ask the community, the project, anyone else, just like that, uh, could I uh, maybe, maybe add uh, an answer to my uh, issue more quickly? And uh, I will save time uh, for this particular use case because it was on me because I, uh, 
that in a good mood this day. But anyway, uh, I don't say that informal uh, and formal are uh, opposite, but are completely complementary. I mean that uh, you can start uh, to communicate with a project, with a community, by creating a formal communication. Fork that communication to an informal, like a, a meeting uh, or a direct discussion uh, outside in a bar, I don't know. And just don't forget, if you come back to a normal communication, in, to a formal communication, to just uh, put the resume of uh, that uh, discussion. That, that's possible. That's where I. That's why, a few months ago, uh, we proposed the chat service at the foundation to just be more uh, informal in our communication with the community and to extend community. That's definitely the idea. It's not to be formal, but really to uh, involve and more. Uh, uh, I would say. <laughs> using tools to chat and uh, allow any one of you to communicate directly or indirectly via some ch common channel uh, without this uh, wall of uh, something too formal and, uh, and to break barriers uh, uh, over the time. So about the chat service, uh, it's a platform we launched uh, in uh, April for the production instance, but we had a period of uh, testing period with a staging instance for a month, just to be sure that the product uh, really uh, was uh, well uh, adapted to the, the needs uh, to uh, the community. So we had, uh, uh, at that time, uh, uh, a test community. Uh, the chat service uh, proposed public room, so each uh, Eclipse project can ask for a public room where we, we can uh, start uh, chatting. Uh, we have this uh, space concept, so it's uh, a way to uh, group room in the same uh, organization. Uh, you can ask for any project uh, via uh, the help desk or uh, merge request. We have a project uh, as code where you can propose a pull request to create room. Uh, I will come back to this uh, later. It's really accessible to everyone. Uh, you need a matrix account from the Eclipse Foundation, so you can create uh, your uh, Matrix uh, Eclipse uh, account uh, by just first logging with uh, your um, Eclipse account, and after at your first connection, you will be asked about your uh, username you will have uh, on the platform, or you can use uh, your uh, federated account on any platform of the Matrix uh, ecosystem, uh, Matrix.org, or any other uh, Matrix server. Uh, and interact uh, with uh, a public uh, public room. Uh, there's a possibility uh, also to access our um, our room uh, with uh, guest access. It's a read-only mode, so you don't need uh, to be authenticated to access and read uh, uh, messages. Uh, but to interact, really, you you need uh, an account for that. And from the chat service, uh, it's a federated service. I will come back to this also just after. You are able to communicate with many other communities, uh, open source communities. Matrix.org hosts many, uh, uh, many, many rooms uh, for open source projects, and uh, definitely it's a game changer. So everything is based on Matrix. Uh, I suppose you understand that. Uh, so what is mat Matrix? Matrix, uh, it's, a, it's a specification from uh, the Matrix Foundation. So uh, a, um, the specification, uh, it's about API uh, in a federated, uh, federated uh, communication way. So it means that uh, uh, it's not centralized, but decentralized communication with one server, with uh, um, many, many servers that can interact between them and uh, exchange data and even uh, keep uh, data of other servers, etc. Et uh, so that's uh, implemented by the Matrix Foundation. They uh, have a default implementation for the backend, which uh, name uh, is uh, Synapse. It's uh, in Python. Um, many many clients you can connect with your smartphone, with a, a web browser. There's a web app. Uh, there's many many applications uh, developed 
most popular is Element Web. Uh, you can create uh, bridges with other communities, Slack, uh, WhatsApp. So uh, I have an example uh, for that. And um, you can use both and many, many other features. Really interesting. Yeah. So why matrix? So first, it's definitely the federation model uh, and uh, the ability to uh, to help communities to interact between them, uh, themselves. So, uh, and uh, after that, many other uh, features, uh, as I say, about clients. Uh, bridge. bridge is really uh, important uh, because uh, uh, many project, open source projects are on Slack. That, uh, that exists. Uh, WhatsApp, that's just an, an example, but uh, it's, uh, it's possible. There's many other tools like that. So, yeah. Uh, there's uh, this feature about end-to-end -end -end encryption, also about uh, uh, communication. We can turn room uh, in an uh, encrypt way, which is not the case for all public room and the chat service. All rooms are public and not encrypt. But all co direct communication and one-to-one -one are encrypt. So, uh, I already talk about bots. App service, that's a specific uh, uh, so piece of software that uh, you can add to a Synapse server in order to interact more avec, with the server if you have a specific use case to implement for your company, etc. I have an example also for that. We implemented it at the foundation. Uh, it's used by many communities and uh, there's a nice SDK. So really, if you want to uh, enhance uh, and create new features, uh, yeah, there's many uh, uh, toolkits uh, uh, matrix toolkit. So where to start? Uh, you can access via your web browser to the chat.eclipse.org. So there's a web. We provide a, a default web client for our chat service. It's based on Element Web. But and you can connect also with your device. Just take care about the difference between the, uh, the URL or the chat service. Uh, chat.eclipse.org and this address, matrix.eclipse.org, that's really important because uh, uh, chat.eclipse.org is only the web client, but if you use uh, another client, it's matrix.eclipse.org that you had to uh, specify uh, first be, uh, uh, before uh, connecting to your, uh, to your account or to your to the server. And as you can see, you can use a federated account to access our server and communicate uh, with uh, all communities. And after eight months, we have some projects. First, Onero for sure. Uh, they were in the testing period, and uh, they were really demanding uh, about uh, uh, Matrix server and uh, the chat service. Uh, we have big community now with uh, Tractor 6. That's uh, really impressive. Uh, they uh, ask uh, often for a new room, uh, for changes, etc. And uh, many others, like Eclipse Science recently, Eclipse for DIA, KISUTC, etc. Uh, we have a replication of adoption with a bridge. With a, we, uh, rep we replicate 10 rooms from uh, the Slack workspace from adoption, so you can interact with adoption through the chat service, and not only from the, uh, their Slack uh, workspace. That's totally possible. If you need help, you have the formal and informal way, for sure. We have a room for support, but we have also documentation, etc. And the help desk, uh, really, if you need help, and if you want to create a community on our chat service. Some stats about after eight months on the chat service. So it's uh, uh, likely 10 spaces were created on the chat service. So as I say, space is just uh, upper level of uh, uh, way to um, group a room. We have uh, at least uh, 40 uh, rooms created uh, with uh, more than 600 uh, users. And as you can see, we have 500 uh, internal, real internal users with an Eclipse account, and uh, 100 with a federated account, which is really interesting. That means that uh, there's a big community outside uh, also. And we have this dedicated, specific page 
on chat.eclipse.org, where you can discover uh, and find uh, communities, uh, description about communities, about uh, what uh, they propose uh, as room, uh, as a space, uh, with uh, some metrics uh, inside. Uh, about uh, some daily statistics. Uh, so uh, we have uh, a few users, as you, see, as you have seen. Uh, but uh, the platform is quite active uh, every day. We have uh, at least uh, 150 users uh, active. And uh, with uh, a spike uh, at uh, 800 uh, daily uh, messages uh, uh, sent uh, on the platform uh, per day. It's not really a message, it's an event in Matrix World. An event can be just uh, to uh, a plus one uh, some on, a, on a message or something like that. Or when you join also to a room, that's an event. So it's not really a message, but the activity is really interesting after just eight months. This is uh, statistics uh, about uh, com compare the chat service to Uh, all Slack workspace we own at the foundation. We have Slack workspace for, all, uh, for many working groups. As you can see, Adoption and uh, Java E are quite big. Um, if I remember correctly, Adoption have something like 40 rooms, 40 channels to communicate. And uh, with all rooms in the chat service, we have some, uh, a quarter of this uh, total room. But I'm not sure that at the term I really use all uh, the 40 room. Uh, we have a global distribution um, of, uh, uh, of all room, and adoption is still uh, uh, on the top of the list. With the, since uh, they created uh, their Slack workspace, they have uh, uh, 4,000 users in their Slack workspace, which is impressive. But it's only, I think, uh, Uh, if I remember also correctly, it's uh, 100 active real users on the community. So there's a big shift uh, between uh, both of them. And uh, in the chat service, so the same adoption. But Track to Six and Onero are the big players uh, in the party. Uh. Thanks for them. Uh, about the ecosystem, so to provide a, a chat service, uh, Fully operational. Yes, that's simple. We uh, introduce uh, Synapse, implement Synapse, and, uh, and deploy in our infrastructure. But we want it also to uh, to be reactive to to our community, to the Eclipse Foundation community, uh, by creating tools that allow us to really create room, uh, um, uh, configure room quite uh, rapid, uh, quickly. So you can, as I say, you can request room. Uh, and space uh, uh, via um, uh, a desk issue, but uh, you can also propose a pull request on our project. So we created, a, uh, there's two projects. Uh, one project, the chat service sync, is a core uh, project for uh, managing API uh, with matrix and, uh, and configure matrix uh, with API call, etc. And uh, based on a YAML file. And the YAML file from a, uh, who, um, configure our instances on the provisioner project, which is open, so you can propose your pull request. Uh, the format is a YAML format. You can define global settings, like a default user, uh, default power level for moderation, administra administrator uh, uh, role, etc., and configure room, uh, room, all room uh, with alias, name, Uh, adding a specific user, etc. It's all based on Matrix JS SDK library. And this is an example of uh, the YAML file. So on the left, you have uh, the default configuration for uh, all the Matrix instance. That's a bit long. It's uh, really based on the Matrix API, but the most interesting part is uh, on the right with the definition uh, all, uh, on your room and, uh, and space. The first one is the space. You can define uh, topics uh, where you, for room, you can uh, define where you host your room. So, for example, for Neo and for all uh, room on the chat service, they are all um, uh, linked to the Eclipse dash project space. So, if you uh, 
uh, connect to the Eclipse uh, Dash project space on a chat service, you are able to see all room at the Eclipse Foundation. So that's the default configuration you, we put uh, to, uh, in the whole project. And we define this only row also uh, space uh, for only row pur purpose. Uh, so we created this project to accept merge requests and to be more efficient in uh, our daily uh, uh, request on the help desk. Uh, but we also create this for testing purpose uh, because there's many new features coming from the uh, matrix uh, community. Uh, sometimes they change uh, uh, a room as a, num a version number. So sometimes this version number upgrade, so we need to test, etc., uh, etc. Et so it's very uh, useful. And uh, we have a known issue that we uh, manage manually uh, for all rooms. It's uh, avatar management. It's, it's a bigger topic at the foundation, I think, uh, between the, the web dev team and uh, maybe other project uh, or other website uh, that we manage. But for an, for the moment, that's fine. It works uh, perfectly. About uh, EF policy, because when you, you know about uh, the EF policy, and it applies also to the chat service. When you chat, you have to agree with the code of conduct of the foundation, etc. But uh, you know, we are in a federated world, so it means that uh, uh, not only users from uh, the foundation can access uh, the chat service. So uh, anyone uh, uh, who have a Matrix account can access. So we created uh, that tool, uh, the Synapse App Service Join Event Message, to just to uh, to be able to interact with that community, that federated community. It also helps us to interact with the Eclipse Foundation community. So that's an app service. That's something that we develop and add to our server, and it sends message me message. Uh, the policy message uh, each time someone joins a room on the chat service. So that's it. Uh, just catch this specific event uh, and start a discussion, a direct discussion with uh, that person who uh, connects and just send a message with a link to the EF policy. Uh, Synapse proposed a specific feature for that, but we were surprised it only managed internal user and not federated user. So that's why we created that uh, app service. And we also integrate chat service with Jenkins, uh, thanks to uh, <coughs> some project, like the, uh, like the modeling project. So we use uh, <coughs> uh, Matrix Communication Plugin, which is uh, available on the plugin Jenkins I.O. We uh, create both on Jenkins and uh, on Matrix, uh, on Matrix and uh, reference on Jenkins. <coughs> and uh, you are able to send the result of your build uh, at the end uh, via uh, post uh, execution on uh, Jenkins. Uh, this is a piece uh, of code uh, of that, and uh, this is a result for this project. You can define your own, your own uh, format message. That's uh, XML. Oh, that's really easy. So please come and start chatting with uh, every Eclipse project. Uh, we have many, uh, already many of them, I think. Uh, the community, Eclipse community, will continue to grow uh, over uh, over time. This year, I, I, I hope uh, it will be a, a great uh, start for uh, the platform. Uh, I try to uh, get some metrics uh, after one year and uh, uh, make a resume about uh, all of this. But uh, that's a really great start. Thank you all for all of of this who uh, really use uh, this platform uh, in uh, everyday. Uh. Thank you very much. If you have uh, any question, we have uh, a bit of uh, five minutes, no? <coughs> <coughs> sure, go ahead.
there's no plan for that for the, for the moment. But uh, with the mailing list, the interesting thing is that you can go back in time and see what's happened uh, uh, about the story. Uh, chat service, as I said, it's more informal. So uh, it's not really important. If you want really to share uh, uh, things or communicate globally, mailing lists are still uh, uh, useful, I think. But yeah, there's a, the limit between two uh, both are quite thin. So uh, I, maybe we don't know. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I would suspect that if I try to reach this kind of services, I might reach much more people. So I might have more For sure. But it, it, but it depends on, on what you want to communicate. Uh, depend, yeah. depend on the context. Uh, if you want to just reach your community but because you have an event, maybe that's chat service. If you want to communicate with the community because you, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Uh, for another purpose, uh, I don't have an example in mind. Yeah, technical question. Even on the chat service, you can ask for technical questions. That's not a, a big problem for that. Many, uh, I already saw many messages of people asking uh, why this code uh, doesn't work uh, at all. So uh, you can ask uh, also on the chat service. I, I, I think it's more for uh, the explain uh, yeah, at the beginning for all formal part, all official maybe communication mailing list. I don't You have to try both. <laughs> because uh, chat service is a really incredible uh, tool, but uh, if you don't have a, a, an active community, it's like any other tool, it's, it's useless. So, uh, yeah. Ah, sorry. Who was first? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So two questions actually. Um, and the third part of the, the question came from. So in my opinion, one of the big uh, differences between mailing lists and, and chats is uh, the knowledge base that you build when you use the mailing list. It's a lot easier to do a search in the mailing list than it is in a matrix um, and emails. So if you want to build a knowledge base, I would rather use the mailing list. But that said, that depends. 
there's no limit for the moment. There's no limit for the moment. Because usually the search feature in Netflix works quite well. Mm. Uh, depends it depends on the room size. We, uh, we have to reach maybe the limit to know if we have to clean all message. That's where I agree with you. Uh, mailing list, you can keep message over in time, so uh, it's more knowledge base. Uh, and that's the difference between informal and formal way, definitely. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. No, but the project is quite generic and public. So uh, anyone can fork that project, that's not an issue. It's really simple that just a GS file will just catch the join events and that's it. You can configure your own message. So. Uh, Yeah, but uh, upstreaming to the matrix.org uh, GitHub repository, um, I don't know if uh, there's not so much app service. I think they propose uh, more uh, SDK, but uh, after for hosting things, uh, uh, and especially this kind of uh, service, I'm not sure that's really useful. The code is, the code is really simple, uh, and I think uh, it can be adapted to all uh, projects, uh, even uh, without forking or just copy, paste, etc. I don't see a real value to upstream uh, this project. Uh, and I think it's, uh, you can search uh, uh, quite easily on Google uh, and find. Uh, let's see, it's hard to find uh, other app service in the uh, full ecosystem. There has, there's no so much uh, project of this, of, of this kind uh, in the eco uh, matrix ecosystem. Good? Yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> you can do many things with, with bot, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. I completely forgot to put uh, to uh, to discuss about that. Uh, uh, we have a moderation bot on the platform, uh, and uh, this bot uh, subscribes to um, some common uh, list, a moderation list uh, from the community. So uh, this uh, list proposed by the community uh, push some name on that uh, on that list, and we uh, uh, get all this uh, name to uh, to um, in order to. Uh, not allow that, that uh, users to uh, communicate with our communities. Yes. The, uh, you, you'll see maybe on some rooms there uh, the uh, Eclipse Foundation moderation bot who uh, interact uh, with room and uh, apply uh, ACL uh, to that room. But yeah, yeah we subscribe to a public uh, list, uh, moderation list. Yeah. Thank you.